Hey, what is going on everyone? JB here with another political video, and today we're going to be talking about what happened at Camp David between the US leader, South Korean leader, and Japanese leader, and what this whole thing means going forward between relations as well as their statements on China and how they are taking hard stance on it. So we'll be talking about that today in this video. If you guys do like this video, leave a like, subscribe, like and stuff, it helps through the algorithm, and let's get right into it. So at Camp David, US, South Korea, uh, Korea and Japan condemn China and agree to deepen military ties. Specifically, you know, they're meeting and they're saying that they need to talk about the dangerous and aggressive behavior by China in the South China Sea. So the uh, basically we see the three countries are committed to consult promptly with each other during crises and to coordinate responses to regional challenges, provocations, and threats affecting common interests. Especially, this one big thing is they're going to be doing joint military exercises annually, sharing real-time information on North Korean launches in 2023. That's a really big one. Um, I know there's a lot of air sirens that go off around Japan, things like this happen. I would assume it happens in other countries as well. Uh, I think this is very, very important going forward. There's still not a, a you know, formal three alliance. This could be stemming from Japan's treatment of Korea during the 1910 to 1945, where they had the most colonial power. Um, but again, we, we don't currently know. It seems like this was, you know, the whole, this whole worry and that this bringing these countries together was threats from China and North Korea, as well as Russia after its invasion of Ukraine. I do think that Russia and Ukraine, invading Ukraine, has been a big spark uh, that's lit a fire into a lot of countries to basically say we need to get closer to their allies and be more distant or like wary it's a wary of our adversaries right um there's a china so the leader's language on china was very strong it's saying quote regarding the dangerous and aggressive behavior supporting unlawful maritime claims we have recently witnessed by the people's republic of china and the south china sea we strongly oppose any unilateral attempts to change the status quo in the waters of the indo-pacific uh, this was met by a response from China's Washington Embassy, uh, Leo Pengu, saying the international community was able to judge who was increasing these tensions, saying, quote, attempts to cobble together various exclusionary groupings and bring bloc confrontation and military blocks into the Asia-Pacific are not going to get support and will only be met with vigilance and opposition from regional global countries. Uh, yeah, this is a very, very big thing when he's made, Biden and uh, all these other leaders are very, very much so saying we're sticking it to China and we need to in other countries as well, we need to start doing this, right? Um, he pr Biden praised the leaders for the political courage and, you know, coming here and doing that stuff, right? Um, saying it's critical that they continue to swiftly work with each other and figure out this stuff, right? I think that's cool having hotlines. I think it's really, really good. Uh, I know the U.S. has, I know, I, I would assume they still have it. I, I know they used to have it. I would bet money they still have it. A hotline to Russia basically saying, hey, you know, we're about to do X thing. There's any of your soldiers there? Nope. Okay, cool. Right? They don't want to have any issues. Uh, we see here China is viewing this warily, basically warning that U.S. efforts to strengthen ties with South Korea and Japan could increase tension and confrontation in the region, which I obviously don't want. But yeah, um, you know, looking at the net upcoming elections, they want to make the progress between South Korea and Japan harder to reverse by institutionalizing and between cooperation across the board, which I think is good. I think it's good to be working with their allies a lot more. I just think it's very good as a whole. So. My thoughts on this is, I think it's good, I think that it's good to have leaders working together, especially when it comes to dealing with other countries that are much more, um, you know, non-democratic, right, that are very, very, um, I would say, not the best, right, we have countries like China, we have countries like uh, North Korea, which, which North Korea, is, yeah, it's pretty six, speaks for itself, and Russia, right, these countries do not really have the fairness that other that western countries do or when i say western i also will probably i will definitely include japan in that i don't know about how, how westernized south korea is i, I know that we basically installed uh, japan's you know constitution i don't know about um south korea but i i, I would say these are seem to be more western leaning or western-esque things i know we have a lot of troops in south korea that uh, you know train to my knowledge from the past so I think going forward, more more working together is always good and always important. So I think this is a very, very good point, and I think we need to focus on this and push it more. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know down below what you guys thought. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next video. Bye, everybody. Stay safe out there. Like, subscribe, all good stuff. Peace, peace.